Thank you all for being here. It's a great honor uh, to, to be standing here at Georgetown University uh, opening up this wonderful conference. Um, I have the uh, fun part of the morning to introduce the entrepreneurs, uh, which is why we're here. We're an organization that is trying to unleash the potential of these entrepreneurs to make important changes in our region. So you're about to see and meet uh, some real brave, as uh, Chris said, uh, young men and women who are trying to undertake the titanic task of not only creating a successful business, but doing it in difficult environments and trying to create both social and environmental impact along the way. Something uh, challenging for anybody. Uh, before I give you a small overview of, the, of who's here, I wanted to take time to thank our staff and our portfolio managers. Uh, the portfolio managers are the people tasked with working directly with the entrepreneurs uh, developing their strategic plans, enhancing their business models, um, helping them think through uh, the complexity of, of financing, ultimately helping them put together a package that will give them the best uh, probability of raising money and money that is aligned with both the values of, uh, with their values and their company values that is in line with what the business model needs and is in line with what the market is willing to put together. And those of you, um, Chris has talked eloquently about some of the challenges for the entrepreneurs, but for the investors, um, I know it's also very challenging. We ran a fund uh, called the Agora Venture Fund to invest in some of these entrepreneurs. And we, we also understand uh, what it takes to be an investor and a successful investor. Um, and it's very difficult work. So what I would encourage you to do, uh, what I would encourage the investors to do is, when you hear these presentations, you have to hear uh, definitely what is the value that is being created, what is the model that these entrepreneurs are gonna present that'll give them the best chance of success. But you also have to see these people um, as people who will work uh, tirelessly and do anything uh, that is in their control and sometimes things that are out of their control to make these investments successful. Not only because they're working very hard to make the capital that they uh, bring on to make it grow, but also because their company is a representation of something much, much bigger than themselves. It's a representation of something much bigger than who each of us are as individuals. It is the chance to create deep and transformative impact in some of the poorest economies in the world. And in our experience, the investors who have taken a, a holistic approach to understanding how their money and their human and social capital can contribute to helping the business grow are the ones who ultimately find the best returns. So with that, I am very excited to present to you the uh, companies at IIA 2013. Uh, they are here from over 13 countries in Latin America, representing close to $50 million in capital that they're looking to raise. Um, there are 21 companies who have the potential to create uh, tens of thousands of high paying jobs uh, in the region. So uh, please join me in welcoming uh, the, the following companies uh, and we'll invite the first company to come up and tell you what they're doing. Good morning. My name is Ricardo. I was born in Guatemala, Central America. And, uh, hold on. It's not working. As I was saying, I was born in Guatemala, Central America. And early on in my life, I became aware of the many social issues affecting particularly children. And that's why six years ago, I founded Do Good, a corporate services company servicing corporations throughout Central America. And through that, a program called Robin was born. And Robin has become, in these last three years, a champion for children literature in the region, delivering storybooks directly to the hands of thousands of children. Robin is now 
strong, healthy, and growing. And we feel the time has come to take it to another level. What we want to do is summon the incredible positive power for children of storytelling. We want to summon the greatest storyteller in the world and bring it to life. And we call him the Hakawati. And what we want to do is build the world's largest and best online children storytelling platform to provide free access to high quality literature throughout the world. And we're confident that the Hakawati is coming soon with your support. We've invested five years of our lives learning how to do it. We know how to do it. And we're counting on someone sitting in this audience to help us write the next chapter in this story. Thank you. Hello, my name is Silvia Chevi. I'm from Uruguay, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Greentizen. We created Greentizen to address the problems utilities have around the world to provide energy, especially at the peak hour when the, the cost of supplying energy is higher than the price they can charge their customers. We help utilities engaging their customers in energy efficient behavior Shifting, drifting away the consumption away from the peak hour. We also help all kinds of companies engage their customers in their social responsibility programs. We do that leveraging the power of social networks. Users go online to greentizen.com or download our free apps and start sharing and joining sustainable actions. I'm here looking for strategic partners and $500,000 investment to expand to other countries in Latin America. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Paul Goodman from Acopio, and we are a vertically integrated toy manufacturer. It's so hard to stand here and not want to play with this thing. Um, <clears throat> no, so I'm Paul from Acopio. We're a software startup from San Francisco, operating in Latin America. And what we do is we provide software tools for agricultural producers in the region. In Latin America and actually all around the world, agricultural cooperatives and unions uh, and associations and other producer groups uh, are the critical, critical factor for smallholder producers in helping them make it in the, in the global marketplace. They provide training, they aggregate their products, they take their products to market, they help them maintain uh, different certification schemes that allow them to bring home fair trade and other social premiums. Um, and they really are the, the critical factor. And what we do is we work with those groups to help them uh, make their operations more efficient. Our software tools help them manage a variety of different processes that are critical for their success. And we help them have more transparent dealings internally as well as more transparent dealings with all their partners up the value chain. Finally, we help them uh, deliver highly traceable products all the way from origin to the retailer. This is a, a little demonstration of our platform. Uh, and if you'd, love to, if you'd like to learn more, I'd love to see you this afternoon in the deal room. Thank you. There are one billion people in the world today who don't have access to a reliable water source. And this is one of the biggest problems at the base of the pyramid. My name is Benjamin Cohen. This is Toll. I'm the president and CEO, and we're doing something about the, the water problem in the world today. So one of the reasons for this is that for this problem is because we have um, these communities and then remote water sources, and we don't have a way to connect the remote water source to the community who needs it. And uh, in natural disasters and in emergency situations, this problem is amplified. Back in 2010, uh, in the Haiti earthquake, there were a lot of people that died because they didn't have uh, access to water. There was water available, but there wasn't a good way to get it to the people who needed it. So my co-founder and I developed a solution to this. Okay. And uh, what we do is we take very long segments of piping and we put them on these large spools. We do several kilometers in length. We hang it from a helicopter. And then we uh, can install the, the pipeline over any kind of ter terrain to connect point A to point B to connect the water source to the people who need it. Uh, this is a tested, proven solution. 
Uh, we have our, our first sale. We're operating out of uh, Santiago, Chile right now. Um, and, and we do custom designs. We do project management, um, maintenance, uh, training. And uh, we can install a kilometer of piping in nine minutes, which is a world record. Um, we look forward to speaking with you tomorrow at the, the deal room. At, uh, we're at 220. Thanks so much. invited me back. Must have been an amazing speech. Um, again, I'm Chris Hoey from Tegu. If, if you walk into uh, a toy store in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, you will see a bunch of building block sets that have pieces that look substantially similar to this. Uh, none of those pieces, unless they're from our company, can do this and that. Um, we, my brother and I, six years ago set out to create a for-profit bridge between the developing economy of Honduras and the affluence, the, the affluence of the developed world, essentially. Sophisticated consumers uh, in their everyday purchasing decisions funding a business that would purposefully create jobs and outside social, outsized social and environmental impact in Honduras. Honduras is a country with over 35% unemployment. Um, Four years on from taking our first round of capital, we've managed to turn uh, over two million in sales last year. We've sold about 150,000 units of our toys uh, cumulatively. And uh, we are seeking capital partners now to help us fuel and fund explosive growth. Basically, we've done a robust proof of concept in the world market. People like our products. They've won uh, numerous awards, as you can see here. Um, and now it's time to take this to scale. Now it's time to reach profitability. Uh, we need to fund uh, some burn to get there over the next 12 to 18 months. And we also need to fund the transformative uh, investments both at the factory level and amongst our sales and marketing team that are going to lead us to uh, multiplying effect over time. I'll be in a deal room later this afternoon, and we'd love to chat with you more about the opportunity. Thanks. Hello, my name is Ben Sanzabel. I'm a CEO and co-founder of CO2 Bamboo in Nicaragua. Um, my life partner, uh, Peter, who's here somewhere in the room, and I uh, came to Nicaragua four years ago with the vision to have environmental and social impact. And we did this by focusing on, on climate mitigation. Essentially, the premise was wherever you have bamboo, uh, wood, sorry, Tegu, wherever you have wood, put bamboo instead because bamboo is regenerative. Um, and we did it by uh, wanting to create demand, and what we saw is that there was a huge housing deficit as well in Latin America. So we decided to go after the housing deficit, and I'm pleased to say that we've had significant impact in the last four years. We have um, built 150 homes for victims of uh, disasters. Uh, we've created 100 direct jobs and up to 500 jobs if you count the indirect jobs, including the indigenous Mayagna community leaders, uh, members, where the bamboo is, who harvest the bamboo. Um, so, uh, we've uh, gone through the process of the GEARS process, uh, B Corp. Um, we've, um, we've met a number of milestones. We have also, and this is why uh, if you come to the deal room Wednesday, um, you'll see this will be a somewhat of a different conversation. Uh, we've also hit hard the, uh, what some of you call the pioneer gap. Essentially, what we've done so far, we've done purely on our own funds and by taking on debt and some equity. We have not received any grant from anybody. And what we are facing right now is a very, very serious uh, cash crunch. And we are essentially insolvent um, as we go through now. A little bit of perspective, we've gone through 11 or 12 near-death experiences over the last four years. So um, my wife keeps telling me, yeah, yeah, this is just another one. Today doesn't feel like it, but perhaps. Uh, what, the conversation I want to have Wednesday is there are lots of positive stories about what you see here. There are multiple segments you see upper right. Uh, we've so far mostly played in the upper left, which is the government contracts for housing. We've started to open up the private sector for housing because no one is offering what we're offering, which is um, cost-competitive houses that can, where people can go to the commercial banks at the base of the pyramid. We've also won and executed several contracts in ecotourism in a country where tourism is booming. So there are lots of very positive stories out there. 
However, the cash crunch that I have is very real, and I run out of funds in a matter of days, not months. Maybe weeks if I stretch it, but barely. So this is a very unusual situation to be in. I'll invite Ricardo to pipe in uh, when uh, it's appropriate. What, what, the message that I want to leave is that we have done a lot and achieved a lot to get there, and it would be a damn shame if now, because of a, a fairly minimal cash crunch, we have to walk away from this experience. I'm not ready to do that, but uh, I need your help to do that. I should point out um, also that the bottom right picture up there that you may see is something incredibly impactful, which is so far we have been in the climate mitigation world, i.e. substitute bamboo, which is regenerative, for wood. Along the way, because so many of our customers were in the disaster recovery mode, we've discovered the world of disaster response and specifically flooding. I'll tell you more about it Wednesday, but bottom line, we are developing something which is called an amphibious house, which is a disaster, a flooding resilient solution for the base of the pyramid. This is a big deal if we're able to come to market with a house which can be flood resilient at less than $20,000. The Colombian government has come to market and said, is the first government that I know that's come to market and said, because of the flooding that occurred in Colombia in 2012, they need to buy up to 15 thousand amphibious houses and I'm proud to say that we put together a kick-ass global team involving Dutch companies that know a lot about uh, floating and amphibious housing and we have a reasonable chance to be in this project which means Monday, Wednesday, Friday I deal with survival issues on how am I going to pay the bill in two weeks and Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday I contemplate being an actor in what will be a world-breaking innovative solution for flood resilience at a time when the world is finally waking up to this climate adaptation story, for us to go under would be absolutely criminal. So, come Wednesday. Thank you. Good morning. ABCD Expert is an online center for business service provided created to generate leads for them that uh, helps uh, companies to find in just one step those reliable and recommended service provider they need. Members get exclusivity in their field while keeps total independence, forming a community built on trust and smart cooperation that, in, that enables them to reach the market with strengths that are old, uh, otherwise unobtainable going along like a strong marketing and uh, an international advertising plan uh, that made for a single brand. We charge the experts only after they have completed their business with the clients, also with small fees for membership and connection. Our, uh, more than 85% of our costs are, con uh, are, are due, uh, of course, only after we collect proceeds from our clients. So that's a very great uh, business opportunity. Despite not having uh, not have formally launched yet, we have uh, hundreds of customers ready to offer their service and, and, and make connections. We are not ready for public launch uh, in Latin America and then worldwide. We are looking for smart money, half a million dollars, to make it uh, in the right way. I'm Andres Chiodi. I'm willing to talk with you more about how, uh, how much ABCD expert can achieve. Thank you. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential to every healthy diet. The American Heart Association agrees with that statement. Illuminus, a research firm, a market research firm, found out last year that 50% of Americans believe they need more fiber in their diet. Chia is the best source from the vegetable world for omega-3 and fiber. We have a project of $9 million total, and we're looking for $6.1 million to build the plant 
and to buy enough chia to process it and get the oil and the fiber to market. Hi, he's my partner, Rances. I am Melvin. We are co-founder of CAC Trading. CAC Trading has the most comprehensive CAC program in Central America, impacting the base of the pyramid. We work with small farmers in Nicaragua, giving them micro loan, technical assistance, agricultural supply, and the most important, a fair, a fair contract. That a fair contract with income 10 times greater than other crops. We invite you to visit us tomorrow, Wednesday, in the dual room. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Emily Stone. I'm the co-founder and managing director of Maya Mountain Cacao. Uh, my company is located in Belize, which has the fastest growing population rate of any country in Central America. Um, the specific area where we work in the Toledo district is characterized by uh, Mayan populations, Kekchi and Mopan Maya, with 70% of the population at or below the poverty line. Uh, my company is called Maya Mountain Cacao, and what we do is provide technical assistance, access to credit, and premium market access to hundreds of smallholder farming families who farm cacao, um, also known as cocoa beans. It's the raw material for chocolate. Um, cacao grows under shade in biodiverse agroforestry systems and is connected to an $80 billion gro growing global market um, that provides an economic incentive for conservation while giving these uh, communities the potential to lift their farmers and their families out of poverty. The demand for our product is far greater than our supply. Um, I'm thrilled to announce we're here to raise $200,000 to uh, allow us to invest in increasing that supply, both in Belize and in neighboring countries where we believe this model has incredible impact potential. Um, we seek to bring Central America back to the main stage of cacao sourcing, reincorporating the Maya heritage into this growing global industry in a meaningful way, um, bringing thousands of farming families out of poverty and uh, preventing deforestation in some of the world's most important biodiverse habitats. Um, we have a deal room tomorrow at 4.40 and I hope you'll join us there. Thank you. Do you know what the most life-saving technology in the past two centuries has been? The toilet. I'm Jessica from X-Runner, and poop means business. <laughs> in Lima, Peru, three million people do not have proper toilets. Instead, families depend on buckets or pit latrines. They struggle every day with the environmental and health consequences. X-Runner provides its customers a waterless and stylish toilet. It does not require any sewer connections because it collects the poop. Every week, we pick up that poop for a fee and then treat it ecologically through composting. By doing so, we make sure that our customers' homes remain safe and clean. Within the next year, we want to grow from 50 to 500 households. And to achieve this, we need to produce toilets and we need to strengthen our marketing and sales strategy. So we're looking to raise $65,000 in grant and $200,000 in debt. So come join us today, 2 10 p.m. in our deal room. Hello everyone, my name is Sochil Palacios. I am from El Salvador and my company name is Delimaya. I'm the co-founder and also the CEO of the company. Delimaya is located in Central America in El Salvador and we have seen a very serious problem in the society. People is being unhealthy. As you can notice, uh, there has been an increase in many health conditions such as obesity, such as diabetes, uh, heart disease, and all this is because of the bad habits of consumption of the people. Uh, for example, in the United States, there has been an 
uh, research that, and statistics that says that the 30% of the population is obese. So we are facing obesity. In, in Latin America, there has been in the last eight years an increase of the 40% of obesity. So uh, there is a, a very issue important to solve. So that's why Deli Maya, uh, is, uh, that is that mission. We want to promote and increase the consumption of, the, uh, of dried fruit with, as a healthy, healthy snack in the daily uh, diet of our clients, of our consumers. So uh, in Deli Maya, we are producing and commercializing uh, healthy snacks that are made with tropical high quality dry fruit, dried vegetables, and also nuts and seeds. We are doing it that in a very funny combination uh, with many uh, mix of products of fruits and also we are making like mango with chili with spicy or plantain with spicy and such combinations in a very practical way so our consumers will have the opportunity to take their healthy snacks everywhere. Uh, we have seen a very huge opportunity in the market because of the trends uh, for the food industry, there is a huge demand of uh, this kind of uh, food that doesn't have any preservatives, additives, and it's completely natural. So the Limaya, in the Limaya, we are doing that. So uh, I invite you, if you would like to, more, to know more a little bit of the Limaya and to taste the very exotic and delicious Maya flavors, I will be this afternoon at 3.20. So... I see you there. Thank you. Morning. My name is Patrick Woodyard, and I'm the CEO of Nisolo. In the world we live in today, it is possible to meet the needs of entrepreneurs like the Mendez family and meet the desire to scale a business to meet the desires of millions of consumers around the world. To our customers, we offer a product that in terms of comfort, quality, style, and price surpasses top names in the retail industry. In addition, we offer a profound social impact through every sale that we make, and that's probably something that can't be said for the shoes that are on your feet right now. To our artisans, we offer training in both design and management, as well as market access through the Nisolo brand. More than a job for 30 individuals, so far this has meant an average income increase of 400% per artisan. In addition, it's meant transformed living conditions for each family. And even two of the families that we're working with have sent their first child to college, the first in the history of the entire family. In the last year and a half, we've sold over $390,000 worth of product to 5,000 different customers in 42 out of 50 U.S. states and 18 different countries. We've proven that our product sells, we've proven that it lasts. We've proven that our impact is profound. Now, we want to scale our business by 10 times in the next four years. And in order to do that, we need $675,000 worth of growth capital that will go into inventory um, and R&D, as well as marketing. And now I forgot what I was going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's about, it's about a bigger picture here, though. This, the reason why we want to scale this business is because what the fashion industry reads, needs right now is success story in this space. They need something that's seriously successful that other companies can look at and believe that this model really can scale. Um, if that happens, then the ability to truly mainstream the conscious consumerism movement becomes a reality. And what happens as a result of that is that the millions of people around the world, 250 million in the apparel industry alone that are employed in the supply chain, if that happens, people like the Mendez family's lives will be impacted profoundly. See the bigger picture here. We hope you jo you'll join us uh, in our deal room this afternoon. Thanks so much for listening. Good morning, my name is Gabriela Flores. I'm the founder of Kira Design, a company that creates high-end home accessories. We work with amazing, talented artisans in Bolivia, and we, you have to keep going so they can see. 
and we only use discarded or recycled materials such as wood, textiles, and glass. We are the leading design company in Bolivia right now, and for the past years, we have produced more than 20,000 pieces. We have sold more than $600,000. We have created five collections, and we have trained more than 700 artisans all around Bolivia. Our goal is to become the leading design handcraft company in the world, and for that, you can keep going so they see. Well, that's the trust we use. And for that, we are here to look for a grant for $250,000 and for equity for half million in order to access to global market and to keep with our training and capacity building. We are gonna be tomorrow at the deal room and we hope to see you there to explain you our daily challenges. Thank you very much. Hi. Today I want to talk to you about decisions we make every day. Because every day we bathe and we tidy up and we eat. And for that we decide to buy certain products to do so. These small decisions accumulate and end up defining us and our commitments. De La Tierra is a Mexican company based out of Cancun and Mexico City. It is our mission to make these decisions better and simpler and more meaningful. So we sell responsible products like organic foods and environmentally friendly and healthy personal care and home care products. We sell to families and we sell to hotels and restaurants and we sell to stores directly from producers. We do so by balancing technology and personal attention. You can call us, text us, email us, or you can visit our extensive online catalog and we deliver straight to your door using uh, using um, low emissions, low cost logistics. We require $400,000 in debt over the next two years to grow and to strengthen our infrastructure. We do this to improve people's lives, foster responsible commerce, and to give access to market to many producers who now don't have any way to sell their products. Wednesday I will be, tomorrow I will be at uh, the um, deal room and I hope we can talk a bit more about the opportunity that is De La Tierra. Thank you. Buenos dias todos, todas. Uh, I'm Chris Meyer, and General Manager of Planning Empowerment. Uh, when I was doing development work in Panama, I lived and worked with farmers who were having to cut down pristine rainforest just to put food on their tables. It was a vicious cycle for them, and their undue or, and uh, reliance on these natural resources was just leading them further into poverty. My business partners and I, we founded Planning Empowerment to find a solution to this challenge. We are partnering with communities to increase returns from their lands through agroforestry. For example, growing valuable hardwoods and other commodity crops. These are products the growing urban populations in Latin America and Southeast Asia are consuming in larger and larger amounts. Our pilot 25 hectares of agroforestry plantations are now growing, are generating revenues, excuse me. And we're beginning to have, we're seeing strong support from local communities to, for further expansion. We're pursuing $3.5 million in equity to partner with those communities and reforest 350 hectares of the already degraded lands. We need capital to, for example, purchase a technology platform from Acopio, <laughs> grow more cacao to sell into the Maya business also. This is an opportunity for investors who are an exposure to an attractive, lowly correlated asset class and with strong, measurable social and environmental returns. We'll be presenting tomorrow at 3.40 in our deal room. We hope to see you there. Thank you.
My name is Jim Chu, and uh, as my name may or may not imply, I work in French-speaking Haiti. Um, but Haiti uh, represents or has a business model that uh, is indicative of many business models around the world, which is water trucking. Water trucking or relying on trucks to transport water from central locations to consumers serves or underserves uh, hundreds of millions of consumers around the world. What we're trying to do is to replace this expensive, unreliable, dirty business model with one that is much cleaner and cheaper and deliver that to Haitian consumers. Uh, Haiti is just one market. If we're able to be successful in Haiti, we'll be able to hopefully improve the quality of lives of hundreds of millions of people around the world who suffer under the business model of water trucking. We've raised uh, 3.37 million from institutional investors and we're looking for our last 700,000 to close out the round. So we're hoping to make this big social impact with sustainable investment dollars from uh, institutional investors. My deal room is this afternoon. Thank you, hope to see you there. Buenos dias. My name is Jasmine. <clears throat> I'm the founder of Voss. I'm a product designer from Stanford's D School. And I founded Voss because today, artisans across all of rural Latin America are struggling as they never have before to make a living on their indigenous craft work. <clears throat> this is because cheap, machine-made knockoffs of their work have infiltrated their local marketplaces and they can't compete anymore on price. On the other hand, fair trade has been confined classically to gift, souvenir, and accessory markets, which <clears throat> are, have been absolutely amazing, but I think that there's more potential still in the fashion industry. Now, the fashion industry is a $4 trillion market worldwide, employing over 250 million people. However, fashion is infamous for dirty and inhumane production practices. I founded VOS, meaning voice, to connect fair trade ecological production practices to this scalable and exciting market opportunity of fashion through cutting edge design innovation that we bring into rural local training programs with the artisans that we represent and serve. We make ready to wear high end luxury clothing that we sell, that we sell and distribute through wholesale channels, and we launched with Elle's New York Fashion Week earlier this year to great press and sales success. I'm here to raise $600,000 to scale our operations and launch uh, another two more fashion collections in the next year, and I'm looking forward to showing you more of our design work and getting to know you at our deal room tomorrow at 3.20. Thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Rolando Salcedo. I'm the president of Mi Plata and Plata Móvil. And we are in the business of financial inclusion and technological inclusion. Plata Móvil is a company that owns and develops a proprietary technology to use any kind of phone, cellular phone, regardless of whether it's a smart or dumb or it's all carriers. It's a completely agnostic and universal system that allows you to pay from phone to phone, phone to POS, phone to ATM, phone to cash register. <coughs> and it, it, you can interact with all kinds of devices, regardless of brand, carrier, or model that, that you own. On the other hand, we, are, we have a Mi Plata, which is a Colombian bank, it's a banking institution, to cater to the needs of the under bank uh, population in the base of the pyramid, and it does so by two means, uh, two legs. You got one leg is the technology that allows this complete technology at university, and the other <coughs> leg of the, of the, of the business is a vast network of correspondent agents. Uh, we have already 170, and from next month on, we will have 4,000 nationwide. And we will present it tomorrow in the deal room. Thanks.
Good morning. My name is Nelson Irizarry, and I'm the head of business development for Globocast. Cash still represents over 90% of all transactions in most emerging markets, largely given the inability of existing financial and payment models to drive customer engagement and acquisition in the unbanked and underbanked population. Globocast manages an agent network of over 1,000 retail stores that allow underserved consumers and small businesses access to the traditional financial ecosystem. How do we do that? We do that by recruiting, training, and equipping independent merchants to function as a typical bank teller or ATM using the store's own cash. Our agents provide a trusted and cost-effective way for banks, enterprises, and governments to extend their reach and service customers more efficiently. In Peru, we are connected to over 60% of the banking industry, including six of the top eight banks. We have been cash flow positive since the first quarter of 2012, and we are growing our transaction volume at a monthly rate of over 6%. We seek equity financing to accelerate our expansion in Peru, to deepen our product and service offering, and to extend our reach into other geographies. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ignacio Alvarez. I'm actually not Gabriel Manjares. He couldn't be here with us, but I'm, I'm representing Michel now. Uh, let me tell you, Michel is one of the most disruptive companies in Mexico and Latin America. And that's actually a quote from TechCrunch from early this year. And let me tell you why. Michel has built a credit scoring algorithm that is based on socio-demographic variables to assess credit risk from an individual so we have come from the traditional way of assessing risk from a five-day, seven-step process to a four-step, 10-minute process that can instantly assess credit online. And we have started uh, this, uh, the, testing the algorithm in the telco industry. We have been transforming prepaid plans to postpaid plans in Mexico. Now that the algorithm has been proven that it's ready to, to be launched in the other industries. We're going into the microfinance industry um, so there's, there's almost nobody doing online scoring. Uh, so we're going to be launching this platform uh, in next month. And so we're raising $8 million in equity to continue the process of uh, expanding credit and financial inclusion in Mexico. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jose Gonzalez. I'm the founder of Barred. And what's Barred? Barred is a business model that we built uh, uh, five years ago in order to help the mom and pop stores, the, the corner stores, the usual one that you go every day, and uh, build a network in order to help them to survive and compete against the regular chains like Walmart, Oxo, etc. No? So we built that based on that booth. We installed that booth inside of each one of the mom and pops. We have currently 1.5 thousand in Mexico City. And we sell many things, or they sell through our technology many, many things. Cell phones, uh, top ups, uh, uh, they, they can open an account, they can make a, a withdrawal, they can make a deposit, etc. Many other things, uh, of course, the banking and other, other kind of stuff, like marketplace. No? Uh, we have uh, currently 1.5, as I told you, and uh, 1.3 million customers went last month to our, our facilities. Um, by, we're looking for 5 million, 1 to 5 million in, in equity, in order to build the largest national network in correspondent banking in Mexico, reaching 11,000 point of sales in the next five years. Thank you. Let's give another very large round of applause for the 21 entrepreneurs who just presented. <laughs> My name is Becky Bailey, and for those of you who don't know me, I had the distinct pleasure of working with several of our entrepreneurs in this year's Accelerator. I also run the operations for Agora in Nicaragua, which means that I get to try and take Ben Powell's amazing vision and make it a reality every day, uh, which is a great challenge uh, and a great opportunity. In keeping with that theme, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the deal rooms and how that's gonna work this afternoon. 
So the first thing is that we at Agora really believe that investment is one stage in a relationship that exists both pre-investment and post-investment. And so we really hope that in these rooms you're thinking of these conversations from that angle. I use the word conversation because that's how we see this, this activity. It's not a negotiation. It's an opportunity for you as an investor, you as a mentor, to dive in with an entrepreneur and understand the challenges that they have in their business and how you can help not only with financial capital, but also with human capital and social capital. These are small rooms. They have lots of demand. And so what we'll ask is that you arrive a little bit early if possible. In addition, we invite all of you to join. But if there is overcapacity, then we would ask that you would give priority to investors. And so the portfolio managers will be addressing that on a case-by-case -case basis. But we really hope that all of you are able to actively participate in the conversations. And then the last piece I want to just tell you about is a little bit of housekeeping, because you may have heard that a couple of the deal rooms have switched. Uh, as is the case with a lot of conferences, we have some last minute changes. So for those of you um, who are interested in MeSell, that will be happening at 2.20 tomorrow. It's switched with the Barra Red deal room, which will now be at 2.10 today. Those are still both in room 5.20. I'll give you all a second to write that down on your agenda. And then the other change is that Toll is now going to also be at 2.20 tomorrow, and Globocause will be at 1.10 today. So Toll and Globocause have switched, and those are still in room 5.10. Feel free to find myself or any other member of the Agora staff if for some reason you don't remember that. We will uh, do our best to direct you to the right places. We are going to try and start as close as possible on time after lunch at 1.10, so please try and arrive to the deal rooms early. We also have very exciting conversations and workshops happening at that exact same time, which will be action-inducing events, much like the deal room. So thank you so much for your attention this morning, and enjoy lunch.